Hi, I'm Madonna. I'm your worst nightmare. To rule the world. Why don't you show them what you do, honey? You've never had more fun with anyone else. People, people, we've got to move on to the next song. Somewhere I'm sweet between. and I'm a bitch, you know what I mean? And that's always been the way it is. I'm, I'm a human being. <laughs> I'm waiting. Hi, this is Tamara Levinson, and you're listening to the MLVC Madonna Podcast. Hey guys, it's Tony. Welcome to the podcast. Hey everybody, it's Stefan. Thanks for joining us for another episode of MLVC, the Madonna podcast, your place for all things Madonna, Louise, Veronica, Ciccone. Today on the show, we are joined by Tamara Levinson, a U.S. Olympian, dancer, choreographer, aerialist, and contortionist who has performed with Madonna on not one, not two, but three world tours. Tamara, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody out there. Tamara, thank you for having, for ta- I'm sorry, thank you for taking the time to join us on the show today, oh, especially no um, since you are far away from us in Lisbon, Portugal, correct? Yeah, I'm in Cascais, Portugal, which is oh. about... <gasps> oh, I love like, Cascais. Oh, have you been? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. It's about like 20 minutes in the car from Lisbon. So same vicinity. Yes, I went biking along the beach there. Exactly. Or, or, or along the water, there was it's, it's sort of a cliff. And then I went cliff. I was oh. walking along the rocks, and there was not they they are not hurting for views out there. No, no, it's absolutely beautiful, and we have the ocean, and and like you said, these beautiful rock structures and boardwalks, and it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, I yes. have not been to Portugal since I was a little boy, but I, you know, I'm so jealous of people like you, Tamar, that just have gone out there and created these brand new lives. Tell me about that a little bit. Well. I think that that's just in my blood. My parents are travelers and we're immigrants and I've always traveled. I've always been curious about different cultures and I get bored really fast. So I like to move it around, you know, Mm -hmm. I like different kinds of people and different foods, different ambiance, different adventures. So, but I fell in love with a Portuguese man and that's why I ended up here because I was actually going to end up in in Mexico because I love, Uh I love Mexico. Um, but Portugal has been good to me, so I'm not mad at it. And like you said, it's beautiful here. You know? Are you just like devouring pastel de nada left and right? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Portuguese, they're such good bakers. Like they, they bake really, really well. It's something I didn't bread. know. And so when I first got here, it was just like going to the bakeries and just trying everything, you know? And, mm-hmm. um, and then I was like, yo, tomorrow you got to chill out. Cause this is, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at first it was not that heaven. But now it's calm. <laughs> it's calm. Yeah. Well, but see, you, the thing about Portugal is you can very easily work off any desserts that you eat because there are so many hills in that t- in that place. Like, yeah. I, I, my calf muscles were sore after the first day. It's true, especially Lisbon. Lisbon is up and down uh, and up and down. Yeah, yeah. And you walk yeah, a lot here because it's beautiful. Except for today is a rainy day. Um, winter is kind of like that. It's just rainy. It's windy. Um, but it doesn't get cold like New York City. You know. Mm-hmm. like that so Lucky that's been you. really nice exactly yeah all right so before we get down to some questions let's give tamara a proper introduction so you guys can get to know her a little bit better tamara levinson was born in buenos aires argentina at the age of 15 she represented the u.s the usa in rhythmic rhythmic gymnastics it's hard uh, to say. <laughs> uh, at the 1992 olympic games in barcelona she performed alongside madonna on three world tours as well as other well-known artists as such as Gwen Stefani, Avril Lavigne, Ricky Martin, Rihanna, Katy Perry, the list goes on. Tamara took her talents to New York City, and she was on Broadway and off-Broadway performing innovative underground theater with Argentine troupe De La Guarda in shows Via Via, and was co-creator, choreographer, and performer of the hit show Fuerza Bruta. These shows are incredible. We'll Mm -hmm. get into that later. Um, She worked in Hollywood, California, extensively choreographing music videos, commercials, most recently the film The Greatest Showman, which I know everyone loves. And her personal and occupational life's works manifested into what is known as movement, a therapeutic movement medicine technique that emotional blockages, that heals emotional blockages to the art of movement and free expression when she teaches online, which is basically another type of yoga. And I'm sure Tamara will break it down for us. 
Sweet. Yes. Yes, you're you're very busy online. I saw you had <laughs> up, you had uploaded a recent video with y- your little dog Gancho. Yeah, oh Gancho. Yeah, yeah. That was so cute. Like he is, he just wanted to get involved in the dancing. Oh, he's all up in my business, all up in it. And, <laughs> yeah, and I'm so I'm present online because you know the with the COVID that's going on. I mean, I kind of have no choice. It's mm. kind of you know can't travel anymore, can't teach like mm-hmm. that. So it's been online more than anything. And not a bad thing. I mean, is is it working for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can make anything work, but um, yeah. I do, I do prefer the real human contact, particularly when it comes to that kind of like really deep emotional work. But yeah, but it, it's it's good. It's better than nothing, you know. It's coming back. Have we, I, <laughs> I think we just so. all just have to be a little patient. I think yeah. it's coming. You know, totally. Give it, give it a couple more months. Okay, yeah, tell you us, promise. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about this uh, this version of yoga because you know yoga is saturated all over the place. But everyone I know is looking for a different kind of a practice, maybe one that you know works on um, your emotions, or maybe one that works on you know stress release, or some you know some people just want to do yoga that's very like. Uh, focused on breath and, um, you know, and stretching. So uh, tell us more about yours because yours brings dance into it, correct? Yeah. I mean, this is a whole different twist. I think the the only thing that it has yoga like to it is that it's a a practice in awareness, right? Which is Mm -hmm. what I, what I love because really, I mean, we'll get into this, but I'm not a dancer because I like to dance. I actually don't like to dance. Um, but I'm a dancer because I like to move in my body in awareness. It's been like mm-hmm. the way that I can find myself, express myself, connect with myself. It, it's completely therapeutic to me, 100%. Yeah. Um, and so when I kind of finished my whole dance career and choreography career and all of that, I was like, you know, I stopped for a minute. I was like, what am I doing and why am I doing this? And it just came back to that. It was like, I moved because it helps me connect, be a better person, have awareness. And in that also work out a lot of emotional trauma. Um, and so I decided to start sharing that, that aspect of movement. And I call it movement just cause I'd rather call it nothing, but people need labels, right? Yeah. Um, (laughs) right. You gotta, you gotta market it somehow. Exactly. So I called it movement spelled as in you're meant to move because we're all meant to move. And, uh, I think that, um, and so I've been sharing movement all over the world to all sorts of people. It's not just dancers. Actually, it's, it's mostly, it's therapeutic work. Um, so people will come to me for all sorts of things to just move in their bodies, simply to just learn how to move in their bodies and not dance. We're not talking choreography, nothing like that. It's yeah. all super free. Um, mm-hmm. I also work with high trauma people. People have been to therapy for, for decades and haven't seen any improvement. And we get right into it because the body stores a lot of emotional energy and trauma. So when you yeah. move, you, you connect and you also release all that trauma. So I work with a lot of that, like a lot of people that are a little suicidal or have had really traumatic experiences with abuse. And, um, and I also do it for just like creatively, you know, even artists Mm -hmm. that are looking to expand their creative vocabulary that feel bored with what they do day in and day out. So I get a lot of different kinds of people. I do retreats and, and have online classes and, uh, it's been the most amazing journey by far of anything Mm -hmm. I've ever done. Yeah. Well, that's saying, that's saying a lot considering your, your past, your career. (laughs) No, I have one more thing to ask you about this. So, I mean, uh, from what you've just described, it sounds really powerful. And I'm interested in like, if there's like a, maybe a, not so specific, but if you've encountered any like huge breakthroughs, you know, as far as, you know, like you mentioned, there's people that are kind of stuck in their lives emotionally or maybe even physically. And then, you know, they work with you and, it just opens up their lives in a, in a whole nother way. Oh, they, yeah. never thought, they never thought that movement was so important. Oh, all the time, all the time. I have people that come to me with uh, psychosomatic symptoms that they think, you know, something is wrong with me. And then the, the, the stress or the trauma is released and they feel good again. I've had people go into alternative realities, honestly, like ayahuasca, you know, without oh, wow. it's a na- <laughs> movement is truly a natural drug. Because if you think about it, the body holds a library of emotional energy that you've mm-hmm. accumulated throughout your entire lifetime. If right. you're not cleansing, then of course, it's going to stay there, it's going to get nasty, it's going to get toxic, and it's going to eat you up. Mm-hmm. And um, so many people are living in emotional 
trauma and mental and physical and spiritual, and they don't even know it. And that's why it's so powerful to move. I mean, have you ever been to a dance party or or some sort of place where you've danced and danced for hours and you leave feeling sweaty and you just feel so Mm -hmm. good, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's that. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, pretty trippy what happens. I mean, people change their lives completely after my, my, uh, retreat because the thing is once you connect to self to yourself on that level, there's no looking back because now you have felt it. It's very yeah. different than talking therapy because talking, you're just talking and talking and talking and sure it's helpful. There's a lot of great things to take from it, but mm-hmm. when you feel you the truth live in your body, you can't deny it anymore. You just mm-hmm. can't, Yeah, you know? Yeah, it's a very powerful practice. Well, it sounds that, and I will be booking your next (laughs) retreat. No, I'm not joking. I I will fly. Seriously, you should. (laughs) I I want to. I mean, this is all well when we when it's uh, it's appropriate to travel again, Mm -hmm. and we can uh, trip over to uh, Portugal and uh, definitely. Yeah, I do it at this beautiful place called the Montevelho Center, and it's in um, the south of Portugal. So it's it's warm, and the center is beautiful. It's all trees. It's in the middle of nowhere, and there's this gorgeous round dance studio that's filled with incredible energy right by the beach and nice. we just we just dance all day you know it's it's you, had, you had me at warm yeah you <laughs> had <laughs> sun <laughs> yeah it's, it's amazing the yeah, next I've one been is in july all right yeah. well i'm gonna be working on that with that'd you, be so. awesome mm. we'd love to have you yeah well let's go back to the beginning um Rhythmic gymnastics. I remember growing up watching these girls, you know, twirling. And of course, I was doing it in my living room, too. But, you know, being a, a Latin American boy, my parents were not that happy with that. <laughs> but I love them. The, yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> but I loved, I loved every, every four years watching you guys on the Olympics. How, how, how did you how did you choose that discipline as a child or as a young teenager? Yeah. Well, I came to this country from Argentina at age, I think I was like five or six and I had tons of energy. Like I couldn't stop moving. And I, you know, it was like a very, I, I wouldn't know. We'll use the word passionate, not difficult. Cause that's what it felt like <laughs> in me. Right. <laughs> really passionate child. So everything was like big and, and, and drama. And my mother was like, Oh my God, we have to like expend this energy. So she put me into a gymnastics class, like artistic gymnastics, like the kind that you mostly see, you know, mm-hmm. In, on TV with the beam and the bars and the floor. Like and the Nadia coming each. Right? Exactly. And, um, and I did that for a while, for a couple of years, and I got pretty high level, but I was never the right body type. Like I wasn't strong and stocky. I was like just always really flexible and flimsy and I couldn't even get over the vault. You know, it was pitiful. So, <laughs> yeah. So, and I also got to a point where I started being a little bit afraid of the balance beam and, and it just wasn't a right fit. There was something that was right, but not completely. And mm. then the gym I was at brought in this rhythmic gymnastics program. So and no one knew, you know, in America, it's not a popular sport especially at that time. So no one really knew what it was, but, but my coach came to me and said, you know, tomorrow you should try this sport because this sport will suit you perfectly. And so I was like, all right. So I switched over and, um, I caught on really fast. Like it was the perfect sport for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then eventually I got, uh, this Russian, this very well-known Russian coach came to America and I started training with her one-on-one. And before you know it, like super quick in a matter of three years, I made the USA Olympic team. So nice. it was just really natural, like the whole transition and, and how mm-hmm. it moved in my body. That's awesome. And how long were you in the Olympics for? I did the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona and I um, was going to go to the 96. I believe that I, I had qualified to go to the trials. And at that point I, I said, enough, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to. And um, that's when I quote unquote quit. So, Mm -hmm. and then you transitioned into dancing. Is that the, the natural progression? Yeah. And so then I went into a year of a complete depression because growing up a professional athlete, you don't really have a life. Um, so all you know is your sport. You know, I was training 10 hours a day. I didn't really go to school. Um, 
you know, I was, I was in Russia training and I was mm-hmm. competing internationally all over the world. It was only me and my coach too. I, I had teammates, mm-hmm. but not really. It was mostly me and her. Um, you know, I would wake up like at 6 a.m., train till 10, go to school kind of sort of, and then go back to the gym from 2 to 10 at night. It was wow. crazy. Yeah. So then when I decided to retire, I think I was like, um, must have been like 17 or 18, almost 18 or 17. Yeah, I went into a depression because I didn't know who I was or what the heck was going on or what anything was. Imagine I hadn't had any socializing at all, <laughs> you know? And so I had taken a couple dance classes in my time as an athlete and I really enjoyed it. Um, And so it was a really, after my one year depression, I was like, okay, I have to get up. I have to do something with my life. And I was living in Maryland. And um, and so I I got up one day and I went to my mom and I was like, I'm going to New York city and (laughs) I'm going to just be, I'm going to be dancer. Mm -hmm. But it was like, it's very Scorpio, you know, but mm-hmm. one thing to another without much thought. And then next thing you know, I'm in New York and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm a dancer. I'm going to try to be a dancer. So again, not much thought, you know, just action, a lot of action. Mm-hmm. And that's it that you just became a dancer. You said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a dancer. And you were basically, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically, because for me, there was nothing else except for movement and and Mm -hmm. dancing was the only thing that I knew that I could kind of have a career with um you know because as a rhythmic gymnast we we didn't get sponsorship I didn't get paid nothing nothing at all so it was like okay how can I use because I was talented you know like it was the one thing I knew how to do was move my body um so yeah so it was kind of like all right let's go to New York let's see what happens but the focus wasn't to become a dancer. The focus was to become a human being, to become mm-hmm. a person, yeah. to understand who the fuck I was, you know? And at that time, New York was really cool. Like, it's not it's not the New York you have now, which is a little no. bit more Disneyland, right? It was yes. like, <laughs> right, it was like underground clubs and, and all sorts of like beautiful, different people exploring themselves, exploring who they, who they are, who they want to be, who they thought they were, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was that. I would just go to the clubs at night and just spend all night there just dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing. And um, and then eventually I was like, okay, I got to make money. because. And I knew that I wanted to make money. This is something I've always known. That I refused to make money with anything other than I loved. That I loved. So I, was, I would rather literally you know, be on the street than have to make money with something else that I don't feel passionate about. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just super determined. I started taking dance class, which was hilarious because it's you know this a sport is really different than dance. Yeah. A sport is about getting a score and doing things in a certain way. Where dance is expression, like true expression that comes from the inside out, and also weirdly so, which I never understood and I still don't. Um, learning choreography, which is the part that I had a really hard time with, because you are told to dance like someone else. But the reason I dance is to find me, to be me. Mm. So that never sat well, which is why I became a soloist eventually. And people just hired me to be Tamara, um, which is why Madonna hired me was to be Tamara. Mm. So it was a weird transition. So I couldn't get work because I was weird. That's what everyone told me. Um, you were was- to you. I was exactly if that's possible (laughs) Um, or I would or yeah like there wasn't um the industry you weren't you weren't conforming you weren't conforming to what other people wanted you to be you were just shining so bright they Mm. they could only see you yeah and the thing was I didn't know how to not be me you know Mm -hmm. like that even if I had wanted to conform and I tried, I was like, cause I was broke and I was hungry and I was like, God, I don't even know how, Oh, this is a funny story. I mean, I was so broke that my friend was like, uh, he was, he was dancing Vogue at this club called Cafe Con Leche. I don't know if you guys remember Cafe Con Leche. I do remember. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> wait, was that on, that was like Washington Heights, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I remember so. that place. So I, yeah. So I was so broken. I called him. I was like, damn, I don't like, I can't get any work. I don't get an audition. I like, I need to make money. He's like, girl, I got you. There's this Vogue competition. <laughs> a Cafe Con Leche. It's a $400 prize. If you win, I was like, 
great, but I don't know what Vogue is. I don't know how to Vogue. So he's like, oh, come over to my house. I'll give you a quick schooling and, and we'll go. And I was like, all right. So I went over and I think it was like a 15, hour, a 15 minute lesson. He showed me some videos and mm. he kind of taught me what the vibe was more than anything. So I was like, all right, cool. So we get to the club. It's like packed, packed, packed. I was like, what the hell? But I need the money so bad, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I get up there and it's like you you compete against another person and then you keep going. If you keep winning, then you keep advancing in the competition and eventually you get down to like, you know, the two final and then the judges decide who. And I just remember I was the only little girl there. Everybody else was like these beautiful, tall drag queens, you know, like <laughs> triple, quadruple my size. <laughs> and, you know, they, they go like they're no mm-hmm. mercy. Right. right. So, I was, so I was like, oh, shit. OK, I got to show up. So I don't know. I think the desire to have the money was so big that I just got into it and I, and I ended up winning. I remember like somehow I locked down my competitor, like in some crazy contorted pose and the crowd went (laughs) wild. And I was like, Oh my God, $400. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) No. And at the same time you were telegraphing your intention to work with Madonna who popularized Vogue. Maybe, maybe that's what was happening. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it was like that. It was like, you know, it's always been a constant hustle and, but it's been good. Like, that's the whole point, right? Is to to just keep going with the hustle and the adventure and try new things. And then that led you uh, to work with De La Guarda, Fuerza Bruta, which uh, Stefan and I, we've lived in New York a long time. So we've seen both of those incredible shows. I mean, can't say enough about the artistry and the athleticism that is involved in in those productions. We talked to Marlene Ortiz, who was also a cast member, and um, I'm like in awe of the work that you guys have done there. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting story too, because... I was, so I was trying to get a job and I couldn't cause no one would hire me cause I was just weird. And, <laughs> and then I think Gwen Stefani was the first person to hire me. She's cool. She's super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after that, that was it. That was like a video, you know? And then I was like, damn, I don't know what to do. And then someone said to me, Dada, there's this Argentine troupe that's come to New York. Um, and they're doing the show called the La Guarda and maybe you should go see. And I, and I just thought that was incredible because you don't really see Argentine people come to New York putting up a show on off No, usually they're just serving you steak. <laughs> exactly. With the really good chimichurri. So, so good. <laughs> right. So I was like, oh, that's cool, man. And I was young. Like I had just moved to New York. I wasn't there long. And um, I went and I, it was the original, original group from Argentina. So they were all Argentines and they were having to go back to Argentina. So they were looking to recast mm-hmm. and they had never taught anybody outside of themselves. So they didn't even know if that was even possible, you know, to yeah. teach people this. Yeah. And um, after the show, I just went to the director and I was like, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to do this. And um, he was like, well, we're having auditions, blah, blah, blah. And then I went to the audition and true to my whole story, it was, I could do everything. I fucking killed everyone. I was able to, to accomplish everything they asked me to do, but I was a little weirdo, you know, I wasn't, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sexy. I wasn't pretty. I didn't fit a certain profile. People didn't know what I was. Was I, was she Latin? Is she white? Is she this? Is she that? And, um, and so I knew that it was going to happen to me again, you know, that I was going to be ignored because I didn't look a certain way. Mm. And, um, and I was like, no, this is too special. I can't let this happen. And so I just talked to the director, but ultimately what happened was, I ended up getting that job because they needed to go back to Argentina because the visas were up and they needed to put the show up. And I was mm. one of the very few that could actually do everything, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, I was going to say, there's, there's not many people that can run around a wall. No, it's yeah. actually it's pretty <laughs> tough. It's pretty hard stuff. So, and there's water too. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a whole thing. So anyway, I got it. And um, that started a whole new journey that was really huge in my growth as an artist massive and then eventually like the director dickie james and i worked together a lot um we had a really good rapport and so when he wanted to do his own show called forza bruta he called me um we talked about it a little bit 
and I ended up going to Buenos Aires, which was great because I could go back home and and see my country in a whole different light as an adult because I'd moved when I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. And um, it was the, the best process of my life because we started working on Fuerza Bruta from scratch. Like Dickie had a, a very general idea at that point. And um, all the machines had just been built and it was just a matter of like, okay, now what do we do? What's the story? How do we even use these machines? Mm -hmm. And so it was like such a cool process of understanding what the language was of the show, what, what we would do on it. And then what the story was, I mean, building it from scratch. And he used a lot of, um, a lot of the stuff that myself and my other, you know, companions did as far as like, he used a lot of my emotional energy like we would just get up and dance and and break things and and it just came from a bunch of you know past stories and trauma that I had and so Mm. that's how we built the show and then we started we toured with it and then we eventually came to New York City and then auditioned people and then hired people and that's when you guys saw it but before Mm -hmm. that it was a huge journey yeah which was amazing amazing yeah I I lost count of how many times I saw the show because every time someone would come to town I'd be like I got to take you to this thing. Right. You have to see this. This is craziness. And yeah. they're like, what is it? I was like, I can't explain it. You have to see this with your own eyes. Yeah. You're just, your neck might be a little sore at the end of the show, but just know it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And and it's funny because what you guys saw, even though it's, it was amazing, was like a super soft version of the original that we were doing in Argentina. Because ah, when we it. moved to New York, obviously there's rules, you know, like mm-hmm. you can't, you can't do certain things, but in Argentina it was like full on, like crazy. I mean, we were, it was like 30 times more intense. And there was, I mean, it was, we were using real Durlock wall, which was crazy because, mm-hmm. you know, I think we were using styrofoam in New York city, but we were using real chunks of wall, which changes the game. <laughs> and we were stage diving and it was, it was manic. It was manic. Um, so I always remember that, that show that was like a moment in my life that had been really hard for me just as a, as a growing moment you know as a, as a human being and i got so much out in that show it was incredible no it, it it's it's such a um, testament to your growth at that moment too because it's full circle you know argentina and you kind of meet up again totally you know, and, yeah. and I, I love that story well and it seems as if all of those life experiences led up to a very defining moment in your life which is you being part of three iconic tours with Madonna. So you started with Drown World, you were on Reinvention, and you were on the Confessions Tour as well. How did Drown World Tour come to be? Well, Drown World happened, I was I wonder if that was before, I can't remember if it was before or after the La Guarda, but I think it was before. Um, yeah, it was. So I was in New York trying to get hired and no one would hire me. Um, I would go to auditions and blow them apart. I'd get standing ovations from everyone. And they just wouldn't hire me because I was, again, weird looking, quote unquote. So we're gonna we're gonna say unique from now thank on. You. I, I think. <laughs> thank you. Weird weird makes it sound like, yeah, it's something strange and not oh. good. I think you, you know, unique is it's special and and wonderful and and different. And I like I like that. I like that too. And I always saw it that way, but the industry is very cookie cutter, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they give you and here we go. So this is how this will explain that. So I was like, all right, Madonna was the big thing. She hadn't toured in a while. And so all the dancers were like, oh, Madonna, Madonna. And I, to be honest, obviously I knew who Madonna is because I, I live on this planet. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a fan. I never listened. I, you know, I'm, I just stay in, I'm a very, um, I stay in my bubble. There's not mm-hmm. in yeah. my world, in my head, in my body. It's very, it's very quiet, you know? And, um, but I thought, well... If I'm going to dance and I want to be a dancer and I want to see what this touring life is, then you go to the top and Madonna is the top, right? Of that world, of that commercial world. Mm -hmm. So I thought, yeah, I'll try this Madonna thing. And I call my agent at the time and I told him, you know, I want to audition for Madonna. And he said to me, well, they're only looking for uh, black people and dark skinned people. And no, he said black people and Latinos. 
And that pissed me off because I was like, <laughs> I am, I'm Latina. I speak mm -hmm. Spanish. That's my original language, you know? And he goes, he goes, no, no, real Latina, real Latina. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Jesus. So now I'm quote unquote weird and I'm not Latina. <laughs> so I'm like, where the heck do I fit in? So I was so upset that he, that, you know, again, he lit the Scorpio up. So that mm -hmm. pissed me off. So that sent me off. And what I did was I decided that I was going to show up and figure out how to get seen because I knew I somehow, I don't know if I knew that if she saw me, if we could meet eyes, mm -hmm. then she would understand the struggle because I feel like she under like she would see me. I don't know mm -hmm. why. I don't know why. I, I just felt that I was like, Madonna will see me. And, um, so I went to this open call and it was When I tell you, it looked like a mob was outside of the building, like, like lines and lines and lines of dancers and people around the block. Like you couldn't even, it was impossible, but it was meant to be. And when it's meant to be, then, mm -hmm. then the world, the universe opens it up to you. Yeah. And I, uh, step up, I'm trying to look, I'm all this, I'm like super little girl. And so I'm like looking around and I see this door. I kind of push my way through all the crowds of people. And I go to the door. And in that moment, this guy comes out with a clipboard and he's like, Um, I'll see my specialty dancers. And I go, <laughs> I go, yes, here, here. And he goes, he goes, you're on the list. I'm like, yeah, yeah, great. He like, go, go ahead. And it was so busy, so chaotic. He wasn't going to check, you know? Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, great. I'm in the door. Let's see if we can pull this off, you know? And so I get in there and there's rounds like these. I don't know if Madonna auditions are still the same, but at the time it was like, they were, they're long. They're like four days long. You have to learn an endless amount of, of choreography. That's not even like of all different styles, right? You have to right. be very multi. So we go and we just do this basic technique, which is easy for me because I was a gymnast. So turns and leaps and things like that are, are quite simple in my body at that time. So I get past and I'm like, all right, cool. Boom, boom, boom. And it keeps going. We learn another combo and another combo. And every time we're learning combos, people get windled down, windled down. And then I think like the first day ended at like a hundred boys and a hundred girls or something like this. And we're all kind of packed in this room. They're like, okay, come back tomorrow. And it kind of kept going like this. And I don't remember it was like two or three or four days. And, um, and then the last day it gets down to like 20 boys, 20 girls, something like that. And I just kept doing it. I felt super good. You know, it's like, I know it's meant to be, she'll see me. She'll see me. Right. And so I wasn't nervous. And uh, the last day Madonna comes and she kind of sees, you know, what she has. And she's very, um, what I love about her is that she knows what she wants. She doesn't bullshit, you know? Mm -hmm. So she comes, she looks at a combo. I don't even know if we even finish it. She was like, okay, okay. And she cut like half the room in one shot. It was so fast. And I thought, well, I thought this is great because <laughs> I'm tired of being here, you know? So it's, either, it's like, let's go or let's go home. Like, I don't want to play anymore. And then it got down to like 10 boys and 10 girls. And, and then uh, we went in one at a time. And that was like kind of like the first time that I think you got to experience her and she got to experience you. There was a, you know, you could look at each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't remember what the conversation was, but I do remember so specifically that when we looked at each other, it was from my perspective, right? This is my narrative. Yeah. But it was like, yes, like this is my kind of human like she gets the fire in me you know mm -hmm. she's as much fuck you as i am and mm -hmm. um and so i knew and it was almost like and that was it i knew i had it then i knew that it wasn't about even how i moved it was mm -hmm. just about that energy and yeah you guys and, have the same work ethic I, it, it sounds. yeah i think it was this, like what i felt was like it was the same fire it was the mm -hmm. same like like fuck you i'm gonna get what i know is mine you know mm -hmm. Which I think you you have to be like that if you're gonna get anything yeah. like this, you know. There's yeah. no there's no room for, for like I don't know a little bit of humility or anything. It's not like that. Um, so yeah. So then we get down. It's like ten girls, ten boys, and I think they were getting four and four. They were getting four girls or five girls and four boys, something like that. It was really little, and I was the only little weird, non Latina, <laughs> non Latina, <laughs> light skin person in the room and and i even in that moment i was like you know fuck you agent fuck you <laughs> <laughs> you know because you told me i couldn't and that i think is the worst thing you can tell someone who has a dream like sure. how how dare you you know and um 
Anyway, so then I had to wait. I had to wait like another week or two because they were going to go to LA and do the whole thing again with a whole other thousand oh, people. Wow, yeah. it was crazy. And um, and then eventually, one like after one or two weeks, I get a call and they're like, "Okay, uh, you need to pack your bags and come to LA tomorrow." Like it was literally so wow. quick. And that was it. And I was the only light skinned person. And I called my agent and I immediately I said, "Okay, we're done." Remember that mm-hmm. job you didn't want me to go to because I wasn't mm-hmm. Latina enough? Well, I booked it, you know? G- goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that Thanks con- for nothing, agent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not only that, you had featured solos in the show. Tell us a little bit about those because they are iconic. I mean, I... Yeah, Candy Perfume Girl, that was like, yeah, like Tony said, pretzel. Like, I don't... <laughs> you, you were bending and posing into shapes that I had didn't think were possible with a human being. How <laughs> much freedom were you given uh, with those pieces? We, you know, we talked to Alex Magno, and, you know, he's so inventive and um, has such a wide, you know, scope in his head of, like, what he sees. But, mm-hmm. like, how, how did you make it your own? Well... When it comes to specialty work, you have to kind of choreograph yourself uh-huh. because especially contortion, because just because you're flexible doesn't mean that you bend every way you bend mm-hmm. your way. Right. Um, so basically it was like me and Alex working together to create this choreography. And then obviously Madonna giving us a vibe or what she wanted it to be. So it was very um, collaborative when mm-hmm. it comes to specialty stuff, when it comes to choreography, then it's usually the choreographer comes and you learn exactly what they want you to do and how they want you to do it. But that was the great thing about Drowned World was that she hired specialty people. Like we were all there for our thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So that, that was a beautiful part of that experience. Can you talk a little bit about the very not talked about uh, number that everyone loves, uh, Lo Que Siente La Mujer in that show? Because it's just so beautiful and it's so intentional and it's something that, people really had not seen from Madonna before. Yeah, I like that number too. I thought it was super elegant and um, and timely, you know? I, like, I think, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it was a little bit different than everything else. And it also was beautiful to see this and like the beauty of androgyny and, and the power of women, you know, holding mm-hmm. this this male-like space. Um, yeah, I, I really liked that number. And that the version of that song I thought was really cool too. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I- still go back to it yeah it it was lovely i agree yeah and so do you have like a favorite number from drown world tour that you remember that you just loved like every night when you were getting on stage you're like i love this number i liked the swings i don't remember Mm -hmm. what song was it bedtime stories or something like that um swings it was a little yeah, no one knows it because Madonna isn't on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say it's during one of those interludes. I think there, yeah, there's exactly. A... But we did. It was three girls, um, and we did swings, and it was it was really fun. Um, I think Andrea, yeah, I think she she choreographed that. Tamara but, likes the dangerous stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm there to use my. I'm there to use my body. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know? like I'm there to explore all this movement. I'm not. See, like I, it, it's weird that I that this has been my career, honestly, because I, like I said, I don't think of myself as a dancer. You know, I never have. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, because I don't like to dance. <laughs> 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 I really don't. I just like to use my body and see what kind of things I can explore. Mm-hmm. And so that number really allowed a lot of space for that. Well, and so you you brought your non love of dance back, <laughs> back again to the world of Madonna uh, for the reinvention tour. So that was your second tour. Was that one of those things where she just called you up, or did you didn't have to go to an open call again? Oh no, Madonna don't call people up. No, no, you have to go. <laughs> no, no, you have to prove yourself every time. Which which I respect because yeah. you know years go by and how and also the the whole thing is different, right? Different people, mm-hmm. different story to tell different narratives so because no, this tour was more of a it was lighter and yeah. it was more of a greatest hits for the fans as opposed to drown world which was darker and yeah. moodier yeah yeah we went and i think we learned the the stick routine which i sucked at i think i forgot <laughs> the course i was i even i looked at i was like, i'm sorry girl like that was horrible <laughs> <laughs> but um but I think luckily she still she still saw me and and she gave me that job because I definitely wouldn't have booked it off the audition. I I didn't do well, I'll be honest. Yeah. 
but there must be, is there a little bit of a learning curve for a, a, like taking on another Madonna tour? You know, she's always pushing the envelope a little further. And so were there things that like, she, you know, she's talking to you and saying, okay, we're going to have to do X, Y, and Z. And you're like, okay, let's learn how to do it. So yeah. such, such, such as the sticks. Yeah. Is that, I think reinvention was when I did the fire, right? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. So I had to learn the fire. That was the big, that was the big thing. And, um, even though I was really good with it because of the, the rhythmic gymnastics, you know, it was very much the poise was the same kind of pattern. Um, but it's different when you're doing it with fire and, um, yeah, yeah. a living, a living element makes things a touch more challenging. Exactly. And, and when I was doing it, like in the action of doing it, it wasn't so scary. The scariest part was honestly the lighting of the poise and the turning them off. Um, so it was just understanding how I could do that. I had to learn the fire that freaked me out a little bit, but it was fine. It was fine. Other than that, I think it's all, I mean, there's always a learning curve because, because choreography does not come naturally to me. It really doesn't. Um, and so I always get a little bit nervous and I have to be patient with myself when I learn these movements. Um, which is so funny. I know it's so funny to say that when I've done all this work with choreography and like, but it doesn't, you know, it's always Mm -hmm. hard and it's always, no one can tell. I'm I'm telling you right now, I I saw you in all three of those shows live and in person. And never once did I say, you know, that really, that (laughs) that, that girl up there doesn't look like she knows what she's doing. Oh, good. That's good. (laughs) (laughs) It was, uh, but so, did you have favorite numbers on reinvention tour that you loved as well? I mean, I know this is throwing you back and I'm sure, you know, but I mean, you're doing the shows every single night. Was there a time where you're like, Oh, this one's really tough on my body. I don't like this one. Or, Oh, this one's really fun. The crowd gets into it. I mean, I haven't thought about this stuff in forever. And I, like Mm -hmm. I said, I go just back into my little bubble when I leave. (laughs) But what I remember the most about reinvention was that we had so much fun fun on stage you know Mm -hmm. like the group of dancers were fun we were all so in it and we all just wanted to be there and we wanted we felt lucky you know to be together Mm. having that experience all together so that's the energy I remember more than anything was it also challenging because that was the first time since Madonna did her truth or dare documentary that she was also doing a follow-up documentary which Mm -hmm. was I'm going to tell you a secret so was that logistically challenging having cameras following you around the whole tour or did you not even notice? No, you get used to it because there's, there's so much attention all the time when you're in that, in that world. It's a very strange world, you know, it's not normal. Um, and I was always very aware of that. Um, very aware of like, okay, this is not normal. Just relax. (laughs) breathe and everything but you get used to the chaos of that world and yeah. and it's your job it's a job like any other job um so, so you're just there to do your work and you you try to do it with much passion as possible one thing i love that you know sets you know you guys apart from other dancers on you know other tours etc was when madonna chose to take the dancers and kind of individually, you know, shift the focus to them, telling them their personal stories. I thought that was such a powerful part. Mm -hmm. Um, How did you, how did you feel about that? Did you feel like, oh my God, no, that's too personal. Or did you say like, yeah, this is, let's lay it out on the line, you know? Well, I have no problem laying out anything that people want to know because I have no secrets. (laughs) I have nothing to hide personally. But Mm -hmm. I also think that, I mean, I obviously, I know that she probably wanted to tell people's story to inspire other people that were going through similar situations, maybe because, you know, it always helps to see someone that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. Um, But also storytelling is a very strange thing, isn't it? Because it's, it's the, again, the narrative that you choose to express. I could probably tell you how the Madonna tour was in a billion different ways, depending on what narrative I want to express, Right. you know? So I always find it well, but of course, we're talking about, you know, a commercial environment, right? So, right. so yeah, you tell the story in a commercial way, in an entertaining way that relates to many people, which is, yeah. uh, which is, it's fair, but yeah. you know, it is what it is. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah. totally. Because, you know, as Madonna fans, we come to the show already invested. And then when right. we see, when we get to get, when we get to know, you know, the people on stage, it makes us feel even more connected. Mm-hmm. And and then I'm sure it makes you guys feel connected too. I mean, like another question I would have for you is, um, how did, I mean, how do you get used to like thousands of fans that are cheering for you as well? Not just Madonna, because you're there too. Yeah, it's it, that's another trippy thing. It's a trippy thing because I, God, that's a, that's a tough question, you guys, because fanaticism or like, being a fan or loving someone so much that you know, but you kind of don't, Mm -hmm. you know, again, it's like, there's so much good and there's so much not so good. I wouldn't even say bad, but not so good to it because again, you're buying into a story that isn't a hundred percent full, right? You, you buy a story that is one layered and human beings are complicated, you know, and depending on when you meet them and, and what they choose to tell it, it can, it can be a completely different human being. Yeah, there was an interview I had watched a couple of weeks ago. Madonna was being interviewed by somebody, and this is from ages ago, you yeah. know, like years, I think, but like in the late 80s. And somebody had asked her about the, the fans and, you know, does it get crazy? And she had commented saying, you know, I'm, I'm the person that you see on stage is not who I am. Like you right. get, uh, you get a window into a part of me, but it's not the full version of me. And so mm-hmm. people don't really know me even though they think they do right but there's all and then and then there's the other side of that like being a fan it's like there's someone who inspires you so much that you are willing to invest you in them and that Mm -hmm. that's passion that's beautiful you know and and when you hear all you know the lights go off and you hear they're, they're the roar of passion. Cause that's really what that is. Yeah. It ignites a fire in you. Not, not like, Oh, it's for me. It's like, it's for us. Look what we can do when we become passionate about something. And then mm-hmm. that always inspires me. Like, wow. What if you were that passionate about yourself, your right. life, uh. you know, what could you accomplish? You know? And so I always like to kind of put things in perspective. It's like, cool. You like this person. You like what this person brings out in you. How can you bring that out in yourself and then share that? Yeah. You know? That's a great, great message. I love, no, I love that. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So that's always how it felt to me. It was like, okay, this is a, a we're, we're having conversation. I always feel that way when I perform. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm sharing a little part of me and you're sharing a little part of you. And then we're going to both leave inspired. Oh, I trust me. Uh, after a Madonna show, I'm exhausted. I'm like emotionally and physically spent because exactly you're just putting, you know, you're sending the energy up to yes. the performers, and mm-hmm. the performers are sending that. And it's a, a big energy exchange, which it's, is, I think, is is it, fantastic. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So for your third go around with Madonna, um, you were in the confession store, which is now iconic, and uh, compared to reinvention and drawn world, I feel like confessions is the heart. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, there's so many, even though it's like, you know, dancing and disco and electronic music, I feel like it has a big heart on, you know, that's underlying. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about confessions. I don't even know where to start. It's, there's so <laughs> yeah. much there. <laughs> yeah. It's so, again, it's so trippy to even talk about this stuff because I haven't thought about it. But confessions, I mean, if I look back to where I was at that time, it was weird for, I, I was in a weird space personally. So for me, it was a weird tour. I think that I was grateful to be there, but I didn't necessarily in a really strange way. I don't think I necessarily maybe wanted to be there now that I'm looking Mm -hmm. back, you know? Mm. So you didn't feel connected as much as you did to the first two shows. Totally. Because the first one for me, I was young. The world was new. I had never Mm -hmm. experienced anything like that before. So everything was new. And it was like, okay, where am I? What is this? And then the second one, it was like, okay, I know what this is. So now I can focus on having fun. I can have fun. Mm -hmm. And for the third one, it was like, okay, I've done this before. What do I have to learn this time around? And is this what I really, is this what I want my life to be? I don't know. Because see, for dancers, which I'm not, um, <laughs> she's I, repeated this many times. She is the, not the a dancer. dancer who is not a dancer. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's me. So I think that like doing these tours is a beautiful thing. They have experiences. They're living the dream. They put it on the resume, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, 
But for me, it was like, there's the third one was like this for me was like, there's so many things about this world that I don't like. Um, so I saw for me, confessions was the other side of that is my experience in it. Not necessarily the show. Right. 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 It was like, uh, I don't like the, the business aspect, this commercialism, this spending, this fanatical Mm -hmm. over, over the top and us not really concentrating on what we really need to, which is like self-awareness and like all of these things started to come to me during this time. And, um, but it, it was so necessary to my process as a human being because I realized, okay, I'm not an entertainer. And, um, so what am I, if I'm on the Mm -hmm. biggest tour there is with a job that so many people would love to have, and I'm not necessarily completely in it, then, then who am I? Where am I going next? And this is what confessions was to me. So I wasn't, I was doing the shows and I was, every time I'm on stage, I'm thrilled. But after and in between, I was like, what, what's the purpose? What, what Mm. is this for? You know? Well, and I think that's very appropriate, you know, as I think Madonna is always challenging everyone to yeah. sort of find their truth and figure things out and, and, and go inside themselves. And uh, so uh, appropriate that you're on stage with her while yeah. you're doing that. You yeah, know? now that you mentioned that, very true. It's very true. So as a huge Madonna fan, I, I are you I, <laughs> shocking. Um, I, I wanted to personally ask. So um, confessions is, you know, lauded in Madonna world as like one of her best shows she's ever done. The, as we say, we've said before, it looks really expensive. Yes. It looks really yeah. great. It's super chic. Yeah. The one, one of the numbers that I think was such a huge standout for me personally, and I think also just for fans in general, was Erotica. Oh, you know, yeah. Was that the tango? The Well, Erotica when it was, erotic, you thrill me. Ero- oh, yeah, the yeah, disco. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously she did an alternate version of that song in the yeah. show. That was not the album version. And up until that point, no one had ever heard the version that she did. So when she did it, everyone was sort of gobsmacked, you know, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. This is erotica. How is she Mm -hmm. doing this? And then on top of the fact that it was a different version, it's Mm -hmm. also like stellar choreography and like, so amazing. I'm just curious, like, what was the workshop like for that? Like, how was it, was it given to you as that version? And then also while Mm -hmm. you're learning and performing that song, did you know that it was going to be such a standout? Like was, was the, the weight of that number imbued upon you as a dancer? Like, did, did they come to you and say, FYI, the fans are going to lose their shit when you see them, when, when, <laughs> when they see you do this, you know, like what was that? What was that like? Well, because I'm not a Madonna fan, not that I don't like her music or her, I just don't listen to it. I didn't right. know that that wasn't a, a song. Like, oh, under, interesting. right. So for me, it was like, that's how I heard the song. Right. Um, so that's that part of it. As far as the choreography goes, we're, we're taught the choreography for something like that. So again, like you're, you're a worker, you know, and you have a box yeah. and they tell you what to do and you do it. Mm-hmm. So for me, for me, that was very, that I was doing my job. Now I do remember that we were, I believe the purple unitards, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. yes. And I do remember that I did not like that unitard. (laughs) 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 And so maybe that was a no, no moment for me, but, but it was nice. And I think she even danced with Jason and she did a lift and, you know, it was really cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful show. It's happy and it's entertaining and what's not to love about that. Right. Like it makes you feel good. Everyone, everyone loved um, Disco Inferno so much. I, in fact, I remember the first time seeing you, on stage and you had that little Elvis curl and just, <laughs> yeah, we had fun. It looked so slick. I was like, that oh, was this fun. Is the best. That was fun. Yeah. That well, you danced, moment. you danced your asses off in that show. Like I thought I was rewatching it in advance of this interview and it was the first time, cause I was trying to find you in all of the numbers. You don't sort of appear until sort of midway through the show on confessions. Yeah. That was the other thing about that show for me is that I actually didn't do a lot at all. And so it was, it was like, I had to humble myself, you know, it was like, okay, tomorrow, like you're not on stage that much anymore. 
you're, you're here and your energy and give off the best energy possible. And that taught me a lot too, you know, like cool the ego, cool the ego tomorrow. Yeah. Just like chill the fuck out and have your moment when you have it. Well, but I think it was good that she gave you some breathing time in the beginning mm-hmm. because the moment you come on, it is constant work, 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 oh, yeah. work. You know, like you come yeah. out and I love that it's in, in sorry. I think sorry was the first time we see you. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's that fun little girls versus boys cage match. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's a full on throw down in music inferno where like that choreograph, the choreography on that number. I mean, it is nonstop. I don't know how you were all standing at the end of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's true. I, and the, the quick changes are quick and you're just like, <gasps> <laughs> you're downstairs like breathing. Yeah. It was quick. Now that, yeah. Now I remember that funny. Yeah. But you I mean, notice you're good. It, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. oh, well, we've watched it many, many, many <laughs> Pro- we've probably watched it as many times as you performed it. So, oh uh, my god, uh, you could probably do the choreography better than me. Uh, <laughs> no, that's where not, I draw the line. Not yet. <laughs> um, and then you know, and then of course, hung up. You know, was hung uh, hung up was the closer for the confessions tour. Yeah, you were part of the pr- promotional tours as well for that, right? No, Long I didn't before. go on the promo tours. Oh, you didn't? No, oh, no, no. Okay. No. So, hung up was a nice closer for that. Was that also fun too? Was it celebratory? Yeah, I mean that that whole show. I think was. Just, I think that's the thing. I think Madonna brings more than anything. It's just like, you know, you're going to go and you're going to have a good time. You're going to see something fun and there's going to be dancing. There's going to be music and you're going to leave with a, with a show, with a a big Mm -hmm. experience, you know? And so that's always really, really nice. Did you get to see her when she did her Madame X show in Lisbon? No, no. At that point. And once I was done with the, with the dance world and I, I changed into this more like therapeutic movement. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where my heart went. I'm not very Mm -hmm. good at multitasking. (laughs) <laughs> that's good because you have a focus yeah right? yeah and um, and this work takes so much uh emotional effort you know i forgot to ask you about tango dancing so you know coming from argentina even though you were raised in the states i, I guess you didn't go to tango school on saturday afternoons <laughs> no but my parents my parents are tango teachers and they teach oh so you did yeah yeah so i i never learned because i don't like partner dancing again like Mm -hmm. i like to Mm -hmm. live in my space for my reasons and um but they they teach and they're beautiful and i love tango i love the music i love the the culture the history of it you know did you madonna get to connect on tango dancing because i know she you know she had just come off of evita and it it was something that she had trained in yeah it was very yeah i know that she liked argentina she did the tango and she liked it but she was in that moment at the time Mm -hmm. But, that was um, a great moment. Yeah, it was beautiful. She's done, you know, it's funny because I, I haven't thought about Madonna in so long. And when we were going to do the interview, I, I went back and I kind of was like, what's this video? And what's that video? And started looking at her work. And it's just phenomenal, the mm. amount of work, you know, that she's done. I think that that's like, wow. Yeah, yeah it's a storied career. That's for sure. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you like it, if you don't, you can't take that away from her. Like she's no. she's put everything in it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big movie fan, so I have to ask you about your appearances in Step Up 3D, which I actually saw in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> so cool, good. Prin- cool. Princess Diaries, I know you were one of the uh, cheerleaders because I was. I saw the movie and I was like, that girl is a Madonna dancer. I, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> so early on, you knew. <laughs> and the Footloose remake, which is, you know, I was dragged to see that in the theater and I was like, I'm not watching a Footloose remake. And it was actually really good. I was like crying like a baby at the end. Like, <laughs> tell, tell, us, tell us, tell us about your work in those films. And I mean, you know, you're not a dancer, so you just can't. <laughs> so you, you shut up on set and you did your thing, right? <laughs> that's what. That's what you should call this whole podcast. Tamara Levinson. Yeah. She's not, not a dancer. Not a dancer. Not a dancer. No, that's that's our title. Yeah, that's, that's the title. Our title. <laughs> that's it. Um, what can I tell you about that? Again, I, I'm sorry to keep saying this, but it's so it's so weird. Like my whole dance career, even though I had a great time, it was more mm-hmm. about learning the situation and the environment and the the all the people and all the chaos yeah. versus in the work. Like the work for me was always um, came second to what I could learn from the experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no, yeah, that, you should do that with every everything you do in life. Yeah. So when people ask me about those things, they're like, "Oh, it's so cool, step up." I was like. I really like, I always have the same kind of thing was like, this is where I was in my life when I Mm -hmm. was doing that. 
And so that's kind of was how it was for me. I mean, Footloose, I was, it was just a little, oh, what I do remember about Footloose was that that scene took forever to film. And we you went, guys were in the, the oh, drive-in. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. It was like double overtime through the middle of the night. And I was so tired. I was so, You're like, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> I know. Like, I'm really not a dancer at the moment. <laughs> and what was the first one you mentioned? It was, oh, Princess Diaries. Oh, but Princess Diaries is huge for me personally, because I was living in LA at the time. I went to LA. I don't remember why. And, um, <laughs> I hadn't, I hadn't booked anything. And so that's when I was like, well, I have to make money some way. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll try a host hostessing job. And I went, it was the only time I've ever actually done anything to make money other than dancing. And right. that lasted me a week. But in that week when I was hostessing, um, this guy, this old man always came up and he always talked to me and he was really funny and we were just get, you know, like chatter on forever and laugh. And, and he was like a New Yorker. And I was like, this is cool. Cause mm-hmm. I lived in New York for like 20 years. And, um, and then one day someone comes to me and they go, oh, and he says he's right. They go, oh, do you know, do you know who that is that you keep talking to? And I was like, no, no, no. Like, oh, that's Gary Marshall. And oh I my said, God. oh, geez. Right, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, Gare. no, I'm like, no, that's Gare. That's Gare. You know, because <laughs> he come in, I'd be like, hey, Gare, what's up? And then I was like, well, who's Gary Marshall? Because I'm so, I just am not, I don't focus. And so someone <laughs> said, oh, he's a director or something. And I was like, oh, cool, whatever. I don't care. You know, mm-hmm. we're all people. It's LA. It's, yeah, it's, right. It's also like, I don't think of things that way. I just think we're people and I take you for what you are and that's it. Yep. So yeah. um, anyway, we're chatting on and on and on. And one day he comes in and he's like, hey, tomorrow, you know, I got this script for you. I think you should come in and audition. And I was like, ah, Gary, I don't know. I'm here. I'm trying to be a dancer. I'm not trying to be an actress. <laughs> and, he's like, and, and he's like, no, but I really think that you'd be great for this role. Anyway, he wanted me to audition for the the actual role of Princess Diaries, like the main role. Oh, my God. The yeah. Anne Hathaway role? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> except. <laughs> well, not me. I was like, nah, nah, nah. So I declined, right? I was like, nah, I, I, I didn't want to hear about it. I don't and know. that is how the career of Anne Hathaway was launched. <laughs> <laughs> you you turn down the lead in Princess Diaries <laughs> and Anne Hathaway can thank her Oscar yes, on you. <laughs> we'll call that narrative. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, eventually he, he was, kept coming. He's like, come on, I really, really want you to. And I thought, okay, well, whatever. So I'm, I'm going to go and audition. Anyway, he was really cool because he gave me that part because he knew I was struggling with money. And he was like, you'll get residuals. And I didn't even know what residuals was. And I was like, okay, whatever. And it'll be cool because I've never been on a set for movies. Mm-hmm. And so I did that. And Gary was so kind to me, really kind. And, um, and yeah, and that's, that was it. It was Princess Diaries. And I didn't know that that was going to be that. And I, mm-hmm. you know, you still see it on TV sometimes. Oh, yes. like, all the time. <laughs> yeah, and people but are like, that's I see the, you. <laughs> that's the kind of Hollywood story I love to hear. You know, you hear so many negative things, but you know, when you hear like a moment of grace like that, it's, it's, it's amazing. Totally. Um, yeah. I, I love, I love your story because, you know, as, as I've grasped from this conversation is every opportunity that you've had is a moment that you've taken for your present life yeah. correct yeah absolutely and, and like whether whether it enriched you or not it still informed you and and that's such a great message that i think we can all take with us and i i love it yeah well, I, I think that's the way should life should be lived you know it's not about what more things you can put on the resume to blow up your ego or to get more work or whatever it mm-hmm. is it's really about like you're having experiences and isn't that what life is all about at the end of the day mm-hmm. you know is living it right yeah, yeah, we need to learn to pause and 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 feel the people that are in our moment. I think that's that's yeah. something I've learned throughout this year. You know, it's like there's the people, you know, the people in our lives because there's so much chaos going on outside in the world, but it's the people that keep us grounded, I would say. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I'm getting too deep. It's stuck. I know, seriously. <laughs> oh, well, so I think now's a good time to do. Uh, we do a thing we call the lightning round. The lightning round. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just meant to be quick, off the cuff, off the top of your head, wherever you're at in your non-dancing Madonna journey. <laughs> okay. So, favorite Madonna song. I always liked "Burning Up." 
I'm burning up, burning up for your love. It's classic, classic. Yeah. And she did that in Reinvention with her guitar. Yes. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm about burning up. I'm a classic Madonna girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so favorite Madonna video? It is most definitely, by far, Justify My Love. Oh, Ooh, nice. yeah, that's a good one. By Tomorrow, were you, were you in any of the videos? I don't think I was. No, no, just mm-hmm. the three tours. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so I was going to say favorite Madonna tour. It's got to be Drowned World. Yeah. Mm. It, it's yeah. just, to me, that's the most artsy she got. And I love that she didn't go and do her hits. She was like, this is, I want to tell a story. I want it yeah. to be in this setting. I'm going to create a theatrical piece. I, I love mm-hmm. that. It will always be known as the tour without Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that was cool when we did reinvention. She started with Vogue. I was like, oh, okay, here's here's a here Madonna. We here, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Uh, favorite Madonna look, and it can be from a video, a tour, a photo shoot. Where, you know, what's is there a favorite Madonna look that you have? Yeah, I'm I'm all about the '80s. I think the '80s was the best thing ever for everyone, and mm-hmm. um, I really liked. Like like a virgin, but all of the whole Madonna thing, where like her hair was like that wavy, you know, mm-hmm. badly bleached, like dry, and like she had all, <laughs> you know what I mean, and all the necklaces and the lace, and I like that whole vibe. Yeah, yeah. just like a messy eighties hair. Yeah, yeah, I like that vibe. Well. Tamara, thank you for coming on the show. This was really great of you. I loved hearing yes. some of your insights into the shows because, mm-hmm. you know, from a fan's perspective, we just get to see what's put out there. And uh, I'm, you know, everyone on the show is, you know, a person with a life and yes. they're having experiences. Yeah. So it's it's always fun to hear everyone's um the different side of it, if you will. Yeah. And totally. thank you for sharing your infectious energy with us. I'm like beaming from ear ah, to ear. Awesome. I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go move now. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. Send me a video. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Tomorrow, you guys are so lovely. Thank you. Will you please tell everyone where to find you online uh, so we can reach out and find out more about movement? Yeah, so there's two places. One is the website. It's movement.com, and it's spelled M-O-V-M-E-A-N-T. And um, and then there's Instagram. I'm at Kuchira, C U C H I R A. All right, I'll be yeah, checking that get, out. You, you'll get to see some lovely videos of you. Uh, are those like, like planned in advance, or is it you just freestyling those? Oh uh, no, it's always freestyle. You know, you guys know I suck at choreography. <laughs> I'm not, not a dancer. A dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you guys. We, I really oh, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've loved having you on the show. Thanks everyone for listening. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter, MLVC podcast. You can visit our little splash page website, MLVCpodcast.com. Uh, like, and subscribe, share with your friends and family. Um, Cause we're all telling stories here. People, you know, yeah. share, share the stories and stay yeah. tuned. We got some great episodes before the end of the year. And yeah, uh, we're we'll almost wrapping. You. We're almost wrapping up season two. Yikes. Sweet. We didn't even get <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks tomorrow. Thank you. Bye you guys. Bye everyone. Have a beautiful day.